Okay, you ready? So for this session and for the next couple sessions, we're actually going to get our hands dirty. So we're going to get into a passage in Scripture. And I hope it's a passage in Scripture you may not be very familiar with. Part of the problem of studying Scripture is we take into Scripture all that stuff, all of our baggage that we've ever experienced, every sermon we've ever heard, uh, and it can sometimes confuse us a little bit. And a lot of times you just want to come to a passage clean. What is it that the what God inspired this author to write, what was that author's meaning, uh, and to their original audience. You just want to start with a clean slate. So we're going to actually study a passage in the book of Jonah. But before we start studying any passage, we have to understand that an author writes a passage in context, right? That one passage, so one verse in the Bible, occurs in a paragraph, right? And that paragraph usually occurs in a section. That section occurs in a whole book. That whole book occurs in a whole Bible, right? All those contexts are really important and we wanna see a big picture of a book before we see a little picture. So I actually always recommend before you start studying a, a book of the Bible, read the whole book first. Get a big picture understanding from beginning to end of what's being said. Now that can be challenging for the big books like the book of Isaiah right? But it's a really important thing to do. And you can even read it over the course of a couple days, but read the book over once before you start studying individual passages. Okay. When we read the whole book, what I want you to do is I want you to follow these four steps. The first thing, get a big picture idea of who wrote the book, right? Who's the author? That's not an easy question. I would say actually of the 66 books of the Bible, uh, there's none that we don't have some questions on who wrote them. Now, there are some books that we're pretty confident. Uh, there are other books that we honestly have no clue whatsoever. Okay. So that's not as easy as you might think. Who might have wrote the book? What are the, what's the evidence inside the book itself of maybe who wrote it? Uh, what does some resources say? Pull out a commentary or you know, do some research. What do they say about who wrote the book? That's gonna give you a really important uh, information, right? Because if we're trying to understand the author's intended meaning, we got to know who that author or authors are. The next thing, who are they writing to? What's the evidence inside the book of who they're writing to? You know, why was that audience important? How would that audience have understood the words being written? The next thing, and something I actually encourage all my students to do that they really struggle with, but it's really important, try to summarize the whole book after you've read it into like a one or two sentence summary. This book is about, it really helps you focus to try to understand what the message of that author means. Okay? And then I also want you to look and use clues in the text to try to identify what are the major sections of a book. Okay? Say, for example, you look in the book of Romans, Chapter 12 starts a whole new section with a big therefore, and you can see that there's really two major big sections, one through 11 and then 12 through 15 in the book of Romans. Okay. The book of Jonah is gonna be the same way. So what I want you to do is I actually want you to practice what we're talking about. Pause the video right now, go back, read the whole book of Jonah. It's only four chapters from beginning to end. See if you can find some clues about who the author might have been, who the intended audience might be. Try to summarize the book in one or two sentences and see if you can find some of the major sections of the book. I'll give you a hint. There really are four major sections in the book of Jonah. Okay? So hit pause and go ahead and do that assignment and then come on back. How did it go? Did it work out? How did you get, did you read the whole book of Jonah? Was it a good book? I love the book of Jonah and I hope you love it too. It's an amazing story that also teaches a lesson. Did you get some of the evidences of maybe who the author was or who the intended uh, audience was? It's, it's not an easy question. Matter of fact, the book of Jonah is a com particularly complex issue. Did you see some of the clues like, for example, the author had to explain what Nineveh was several times, that it was a great city. Now, what does that mean? Don't you think that if the intended audience lived in the time of Nineveh and the Assyrian Empire, they would have known who Nineveh was? So the, audience, the author is providing that piece of detail to let you know a little bit about when he was writing. It was probably a time after Nineveh was a really big city so that his audience knew, hey, this was a big city. You may not know now, okay? Did you see some of the other clues too? Like you may think the book of Jonah was written about Jonah, but 
it's kind of a really bad book about Jonah. And if Jonah the prophet was writing it about himself, he's not really painting himself in a great picture. Matter of fact, the book makes fun of Jonah all throughout the book. It was probably written by somebody not Jonah. So I mean, somebody after Jonah who all knew the story of Jonah. All these clues can help us understand that most likely maybe this book was written at a later date, say more when Israel was in like the captivity of the Babylonian empire much later uh, than in the time of Jonah, which was still like when Israel was an empire. And that's gonna help us understand the message. Could you summarize the book in a sentence or two? That's a little bit more challenging. How about the major sections? What did you get? I gave you a hint that there was four. Okay, I'll show you what I have here. You should have seen the first section was a story of Jonah running away, running away from God and, and delivering his message. But look in chapter two, suddenly it changes. It's not a story anymore. It's a poem of Jonah to God and thanking him for his redemption and sending the fish to save his life and his commitment to following God because of that, that decision uh, to save his life. Then look at three, the story picks up again, right? Now we've got Jonah going back to Nineveh to deliver the message, and it goes back to narrative form. But look at four, suddenly we go out of the story again, and now we have a discussion between Jonah and God, and Jonah processing out his anger with God. Now, did you see that? There are actually two related patterns there. You got the stories in part one and part three, the story of Jonah running away, and then the story of Jonah actually delivering the message. Now look at three and four. They're actually related, right? You got Jonah discussing with God, thanking for his redemption. And then in section four, Jonah angry with God because he, he saved the people of Nineveh. That's an important part. The author structured his book that way. In the next part, we're just gonna do a short look at different genres in the Bible and how that's important when we study, okay?